Happy 2014. For my first video of the new year, I wanted to do a quick recap of some of my favorite products from 2013. So I'm gonna structure this video like I did last year, and I have 13 of my favorite makeup items, and then at the end I have a couple bonus categories. I'm gonna cover body, skin, hair, and just one nail polish. So while I do have a lot to go over today, it's nice because all of these products have been in monthly favorites before, so I'm not gonna to have to go too in depth. So the first favorite from 2013 is the NARS Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. And I have such oily lids that most eyeshadow bases on the market, they can get me through like an eight hour workday, but anything longer than that and my eyeshadow starts to crease and fade, the NARS keeps my eyeshadow looking really fresh and vibrant all day long. I have no creasing with that. So that was a huge favorite of mine for 2013. And then I also think last year was the year that I really tried to figure out my brows. And I think I figured them out a little bit more than I had in the past. And two brow products that really worked out for me was first the um, MAC Lingering Brow Pencil. And I use this on days when I wanna spend a little bit more time on my brows, build up the arch, and just build up the overall thickness. So I have a complete video where I show this, but I start out with this um, brow pencil and then I'll fill it in with a powder. And I love this color. I love it with my red hair and I know a lot of people with different hair colors still use and like this. And then on days when I'm just kind of running out the door to work, but I still wanna look put together and help kind of fill in and darken my brows, I love the Benefit Give Me Brow. And I have this in the lighter of the two shades. I believe this is called Light Medium. And this is great for adding a little bit of color, kind of making the brows look thicker. And it just has a little bit of a light hold that really helps keep my brows in place throughout the day. So those are my two favorite brow products from 2013. Next, I have the Josie Marin Argan Creamy Concealer Crayon in shade Fair One. And this is a twist up concealer crayon and the packaging makes this so convenient to keep in your bag. And that is where mine lived throughout the year. I loved using this on days when I had been at work all day and I was leaving straight from work to go somewhere and I didn't have time to freshen up. I tend to have a lot of redness breakthrough throughout the day. I just have a very ruddy complexion and a lot of times the redness is right around my nose. And just the simple act of drawing this on and blending it in with my finger just completely freshened up my makeup. And what I love so much about this, while it's not the most full coverage concealer, it never looks cakey. Even when I'm applying it over foundation, I just love that it went on and blended out so smoothly. This next product was actually an impulse buy when I was checking out at Sephora, I think one day during the summer, and it is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Powder, and this powder is fantastic. In 2013, I tried to use up some concealers, and a lot of them I didn't like because they creased underneath my eyes, but this powder really made them manageable and really helped cut down on the amount of creasing, and then it also just sets my makeup beautifully, and anywhere that I have large pores, I just feel it kind of airbrushes and just smooths over that area. So so I'm completely done with this little pot of it and I'm trying out a new one from Benefit that has similar claims, but if I don't like that one, I will definitely be repurchasing the Too Faced Primed and Poreless. I have tried a lot of high-end contour products, both powder and cream, but I always end up coming back to the NYX Blush and Taupe, and I think it's the color. The tone of this powder is just so perfect for mimicking natural-looking shadows on the face. So I love to put this underneath my cheekbones, around my temple, and then up by the perimeter, up by my hairline, and it's just dark enough to create a little bit of depth and contrast to the face. Moving into blush, my most worn summer blush was the Josie Marin Coconut Watercolor Cheek Gelée in the shade Poppy Paradise. And I loved everything about this. I love how cute the packaging is. I love how fresh and pretty this color is on the cheeks. And when I bought the Gelée, I was a little bit worried that a gel formula was gonna initially look really pretty on the cheeks but quickly disappear. But the best thing about this product is its lasting power. And on me, someone with really oily skin, it lasted beautifully. And I think in the summer, what I really want is something that's gonna last, but still give me a little pretty color and glow. And that is what I got with the Cheek Gelé. So that's what I used the most during the summer. And then a blush that I used year round was the Illamasqua Powdered Blush in Naked Rose. And this is what I'm wearing today, and I really like wearing this when I have more nude makeup going on, but it's also gorgeous when paired with a really bold lip. So this is the blush that I use when I don't know which blush to grab for. A huge standout to me in 2013 was the Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutral 02 palette. 
this is the completely matte palette. And I love all the shadows that come in here, but specifically shades one, four, and seven, this little row right here. I cannot tell you the number of days I wore the lightest shade all over my lid and as the brow bone highlight, the mid-tone shade in my crease, and then the darker shade in the outside corner. And that's what I have going on today. And I just love this palette. And I think if I could only choose one thing to recommend from the entire year, it would be this. This is a great standalone palette for creating matte looks. And it's also a beautiful companion palette if you already have a lot of shimmer shadows in your collection. For liner on my upper lash line, I switched that out a lot and I used a lot of different liquid and pencil liners, but on my inner rim, I remained faithful to one and that is the Rimmel Scandalize in 005 Nude. And I used this a lot on days when I was going to work and I didn't get as much sleep as I probably should have the night before. It cuts down on redness and just kind of freshens up your whole look. And I think a nude liner is just a staple and it's really nice that there's such a high quality one from the drugstore. Lip products was the hardest category for me to narrow down and I could have easily done the top 13 lip products of 2013 and I might list a couple honorable mentions in the description box, but one product I knew without a doubt had to be in this video were the NYX Butter Glosses and I have a handful of these. I love the shade Maple Blondie and Vanilla Cream Pie, but if you were going to press me for my absolute favorite, it has to be Tiramisu and this is the most gorgeous nude lip gloss. The formula of NYX Butter Glosses, it's just amazing and I think I like this better than a lot of the high-end lip glosses that I have. So that's my first lip favorite. My second is another product that lived in my purse alongside that Josie Marin Creamy Concealer Crayon, and it is the Dior Rosy Glow, or the Dior Lip Glow. And this is a lip balm that goes on and is supposed to kind of change into your perfect pink. And I love the color that this turns on me. I use this most days, like, you know, halfway through the workday when you're starting to look a little bit dreary. This lip product just adds a little bit of life and a lot of hydration to the lips. So I went through a whole tube of it and then I'm about halfway through this one. So that was a huge favorite. And my last lip favorite, I think was probably in last year's favorites video, and it is the YSL Glossy Stains. And I love these. And this year, YSL came out with the Rebel Nude Collection. Same type formula, but it has a lot of shimmer. And the one I'm wearing today is the nude one, and this is 101. It's a gorgeous nude, and it has the most unusual kind of purple iridescent shimmer, which sounds kind of weird, but it's beautiful on. And then another one that I wore a lot is shade 109, which is a gorgeous deep rosy pink, and it has just an unbelievable gold shimmer running through it. So those were my top lip products from 2013. On to the bonus categories, and I don't think last year I had a best body product, but I could not imagine filming this without mentioning the Josie Marin Whipped Argan Oil. So I added this category in, and during the summer I used the Radiance Formula, and that gave a little bit of color to the skin and a lot of shimmer. And after that was done, I bought the traditional formula, and this was in the scent Sweet Citrus. And I used this up, bought this in the fall, and used it up. And then when I opened my stocking on Christmas morning, I had this little mini version, and this is in the scent vanilla apricot. By far the best body lotion I've ever used. So intensely moisturizing and it just seeps into the skin so quickly. So that was a huge favorite and easily my best body product find of the year. My favorite addition to my skincare routine last year was the Paula's Choice Resist C15 Super Booster. And this is a 15% vitamin C treatment and I would use a couple drops, mix it in with my serum in the morning, and then a couple drops in the evening mixed in with my nighttime moisturizer. This was my first time using a vitamin C skincare item and I loved how brightening it was. And I think Paula's Choice sent this to me about three months ago and I've been completely out with it for about a week. And I'm trying to put off ordering my next tube of it because for my birthday in January, a lot of times my gams will buy me some Polish Choice products. So that one will definitely be on my wish list. Hair care was another category that was really hard to narrow down, but my favorite had to be the Kenra Platinum Blow Dry Spray. And blow drying my hair is not my favorite task, so anything that can cut down on drying time is a winner to me, and nothing works better than this. Really cuts down drying time, and it's also a thermal protectant, and it smells beautiful, so just all around a great product. I wanted to include a nail polish and I was trying to think of my most worn nail polish from the year. So I started scrolling through my Instagram because a lot of times when I change up my polish, I will post a picture there. And as I was scrolling through, it quickly became apparent that I love the Butter London color in West End Wonderland. And this is my 
favorite glitter accent polish. When I've done a very, you know, cream manicure and I just want one nail to be glittery, this is what I reach for a lot. I also just recently used this to do polka dots on my nails and I wasn't sure how my dotting tool was gonna do with a glitter polish, but it ended up being really easy and worked out well. And I think I've also done a manicure which is this on the tips and that was really cute. The reason I like this so much, it's very full coverage and then the gold, it's not a straight gold. It has some yellow, some orange and some white gold. So it has a lot of dimension on the nails. So these were my top beauty products of 2013. And I would love to know if we share any of the same favorites or if you're surprised by something I included or maybe something I left out. It is hard to narrow it down to this number, but I thought it was a good exercise to go back and look back over my monthly favorites videos and share with you the products that really stuck out to me. So I think that is everything I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching my videos in 2013. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. I wish you all the best in 2014 and I will see you in my next video.